Alrighty, so now we've got our player. What we're going to do is we're going to create our first script. Now, when we create our script, it's going to be first be created in our project folder. Now, in our project folder, it's probably a good idea to keep everything together. So I'm just going to right click, go create folder, or you can just click, there's a create button here, and then pick folder. Now, I'm just going to call the scripts. I guess we're going to put in this folder, or we're going to be putting our scripts in this folder. What a surprise. Now, we're going to right click on the folder and go create JavaScript. I was going to create a JavaScript, which is a, like a text document with JS as a symbol, and it's going to be called new behavior script. That's a pretty boring name, so I was going to call it character control. I'll open this. So if you double click on this, it'll open it in your default script viewing thing. So to start off, we're going to have this. Now, what is this exactly? What this is, is just some basic code that it gives us, because we're pretty much going to need this on every script we do. What this is, is the, fun is the update function. Now the update function, the function that's called every time a frame is rendered. So every time uh, your computer creates a new frame, so it's moved stuff, it's worked out, it's done calculations and everything, this is where that's come from. So. Pretty much, this is called crazy fast. I mean, on different computers, it'll be it might be not as frequent on a like an old Windows ninety five computer, but it would be crazy, 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 crazy fast on an um, high end gaming PC. So, what have I just done? I've just quickly moved these braces, these curly bracket things, the braces, and pretty much it's open and close, and everything inside this is in the function. Now, um, you don't have to space it out like I do. Some people have their things set up like that. I don't like that. I like everything every, every having everything having its own line, everything everything spaced out. It's not going to kill me to have extra lines of code. So, up here, we're going to create a variable. Now, remember when we were talking about components? And variables are things that we can change in the um, script component. So, what I'm writing now is... A speed variable. Now, the speed variable is a name we've created. So, this will we can call it whatever we want. We could call it Jason's crazy awesome speed variable that totally kicks ass. That's not a very good name for a variable because we might have to refer to this, and it's easy just to write speed. So, um, what this is is it's a variable. The name is speed. Whoops, <laughs> and the type is float. Now, I've spaced mine out wide. I don't think you have to space it this way. You can have it. Just make sure everything goes colored when mine goes colored. Because float. Now, a float is a number with a number on the other side of the decimal point. There's a lot of different types of variables we're going to cover. There's transform, you know, array, int, string. We'll cover all these as we go along, as we need them. So, I've just set speed to a default of 20 and that's all we need for the variables. Now in the function update we're going to do something called um, a translate which is how we're going to move the character. We're also going to quickly do a short line of code so that the player doesn't move on the z-axis. Now um, uh, last tutorial I was talking about children and trees. Now this is another tree thing. If we look at this script, it goes transform.position.z equals zero. Dot z or whatever you want to call it. So basically how we work this out to transform. Transform with a lowercase t refers to the object that this is applied to. Now you might have game object dot find. We'll talk about that later. That's a that's how you find um, things in your scene dot transform dot position that refers to that object's transform. So we were talking about transforms. If we quickly click on here, we go player transform dot position. So we're narrowed down to these three things dot z. So we know what exact thing we're talking about equals zero. So z is always going to equal zero because z. If we look at our little three D compass, z is the one direction we don't want to use because we're doing a side scroller. 
because it's blue. So that's that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable. This variable will be create like it's the variable is created or declared. You declare a variable up here, but we're also going to declare one in the actual update function. And when you declare a variable in the update function, it's going to be recreated every time a frame is rendered. Now this is very nifty for when you want to have uh, player input. So we've got current speed. So the speed it is currently at, we're going to do speed. So that's our variable up here. If you have an, a variable, you can copy it and paste it if you want to make sure you spell it right. Speed isn't that hard to spell though. Times, sorry, asterisk, input dot get access, open bracket, close bracket, horizontal. I hope I spelled this right. That looks right. Now what this is, it's input the get access horizontal. So we're getting the input of the left and right keys or the A and D keys. Now how do I know what exactly horizontal is? If I click on Unity and go edit project settings input and we find the axes by hitting this arrow and we've got horizontal here with located horizontal. Congratulations, I think it's this one actually. Yeah, it's this one. This one's just a copy. See, we've got um, negative button, left, positive button, right, alternate button A, alternate button D. And so pretty much it's like that tree thing again. I'm really using that example a lot actually. Um, so what we've done is we want input, so we've come into this window dot get axis so we're getting these axes dot hor um, and then the axis we want to get is the horizontal axis so that's referring to this so that's that line also remember to put a semicolon at the end um, so now what we want to do we've made sure that our player doesn't move on the z-axis and we've got player input so now what we need to do is actually move the thing so remember transform referring to the actual object with where the script is applied to dot translate if you um, ever want to know what these things do if you are uh, I don't know you've looked up something and you don't get it just highlight it and hit command um, um, inverted comma apostrophe excuse me <laughs> got a bit of a cold um, so we've got our information about it. We've got function update. Move the object forward along its x-axis one unit a second. That's what time to delta time is. We'll talk about that later. So we know how to look stuff up about other stuff. So let's do this. So in here we're gonna type vector three. So what is a vector three? Now, when we're talking about our graphs, we've got x, y, and z. That's three directions, three vectors that we can have. So, pretty much, a vector 3 is a way of writing down those coordinates. So, we, so in a vector 3, there's 0, 0, and 0. In this case, we want the x values, so remember x, y, and z, equals 1. Now, if we go times current speed. What this is doing is it's making vector 3 times current speed. Pretty straightforward. But what does that mean? So that means current speed equals speed times input to get axis horizontal. Now input to get axis horizontal equals a few things. If we press left or A, it equals negative 1. If we press nothing, it equals 0. And if we press D or right arrow, it equals um, positive one. So pretty much we have the output of this could be 20, 0, or negative 20. So that means we've got, uh, it's either moving 1, uh, sorry, uh, 20, 0, or negative 20. So let's just save this, command S, close that, then select the player and drag our script onto it. So you get the plus icon and drop straight on there. And you'll see we've got our speed variable here. 
equals 20. And we hit play. And well, bam, he flies off. Now, he nothing bad's happened, he's just shut off the platform and into nothingness. So how do we fix that? We can, instead of opening up the script and then finding where we've set the value of speed or you know, changing the calculations of speed if we have a more complicated line of code, we can just go into here, click on it, make it equal 1. Play. That's still a bit fast for me. You might want a high octane, jittery, cod player um, side scroller. I don't. I want a nice, normal one. See, yeah, that's, that's about the right speed. So we're going to leave it for there for now. When you come back, we'll talk about jumping and maybe a few other things like shooting.